Hi everyone, your chess puzzler here and welcome to the channel. This tournament in Germany is now on fire. Levon has managed at last to break through with an excellent win over Svitla, who were both unbeaten until round four. Maxim Vashila grafted exactly the same thing, coming through with a win over Meyer. Little Vincent is thrown in the deep end and he's probably the only one who has nothing to lose. And then we have Fabi and Magnus, each fighting quite a complicated mid end game. And again, each playing a perfect way to share that valuable point in the end. So what we have is Magnus and Vichy being tied for first with three points. Then we have four players, Svitla, Fabi, Maxime and Levon with two and a half points each. And then the rest follow. So anyone mentioned so far is capable of winning the Grenge. And there are some very important key games to follow. There are two games that stand out in round five. The one is the Maxime Levon game, and the other is the Alan Fabi encounter. And I really don't know what to cover. Because I covered Fabi's game versus Magnus yesterday, I may want to look at this game between Maxime, Majela Graf, and Levon Aronian. I shall be following both games closely, but I can only cover one at a time. And it's a very big surprise. Five times world champ and born on 9 December of 1969, the same year as man landed on the moon. That makes him 49 years young and still has all his faculties intact. He's not just playing in this tournament, but he's playing to win. Gary retired from professional chess back in 2005. He was born in 63. And I'm sure you can do the maths to work out at what age he retired. What is the connection to what I'm saying? It's simple. Kasparov retired way before others, and maybe prematurely, but we can only respect this decision. Kramnik too handed over his boots, but are we losing out? It's a circle. Many go, and many fresh players appear. So I'm going to shoot off with this game between Maxim and Levon because. I don't think Arnold is going anywhere far soon. He's up against Levon with the black pieces. And this is something I might be looking at in round eight. Okay, so it's Maxime versus Levon today. And I'm sure we're we'll in for some trade. Last time Maxime was playing white was last year in London and had beaten Levon. Before that, when Maxime had the white pieces, he had beaten Levon again. And that was in the same tournament. And before that, when Maxime had the white pieces, there was a draw in London again. And before that, Maxime had beaten Levon once again. Do we know or can we predict with what degree of accuracy what Maxime or how Maxime is going to open? But is this important? It is, of course it is, because if we can predict so can Levon or his team. And once you know, you can prepare. If we take that Maxime in his last seven games with the white pieces, again, Levon started up with this opening. What are the chances he's going to switch? Maxime also tried the English on Levon and won, and he tried the Red Sea. I'm banking on an E4 opening, but what I'm having trouble predicting is Levon's first move. It has to be E5, but in his last two games, he opened up with the French and the game before that with this. Okay, the game is yet to get started. We're not talking about minutes, but seconds. And I've just enough time to set up the board and the details on your screen. Okay, here we are. We have an E4 opening, which does not come as a surprise. But Levon's response was also not a surprise. And therefore, he's going to go into a Spanish type of game. And when this particular opening is concerned, Black has some advantages because he or she is the one to decide what line to follow. Knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5, a6, bishop back, knight f6, castles, bishop b7, rook e1, b5, b4, 
We should kick back to B3. And after castles, A4, game four. An anti-martial type of game. Levon pushed on, avoiding the trade. But there is absolutely nothing new with such opening. The Spanish, in fact, in case you didn't know, is the most widely used opening in the world. And we might not even get to see a new move until we move into some 10 to 50 moves ahead. Maxime pushed further with this guy to stop the knight from using it. And after this, d3. Bishop e6. And we know what the idea is. Maxime can either choose to take. And if he's not, there is always this knight move. Just in case Levon takes. Okay, the moves are coming in pretty fast. The bishops came off. Land in black with a double pawn. But this is bad. Because of this, the rook is ready to shoot. So black, in short, looks solid. Knight d2. And here, in fact, Levon uses the double pawn to attack e4. Maxime may or may not take. But the ball is in his quarters now. Okay, what do you think he does? He goes for a knight repositioning, but where is his knight to go next? And Levon now grabs the opportunity and pushes on with this guy. And it looks as a good grip of the center, but the question is, for how long? Bishop d2, trying to exert some pressure on this guy. Let's do Levon to cover him. But if this guy is covered already by two minor pieces, would you really want to cover him for the third time? Has the one seen something deeper than meets the eye? Maxime's reply here was his rook move. And we can clearly see what he's planning to do. He wants to break up black center, but let's see how the game progresses. Levon responded with this excellent rook lift. What this move does is to hold this knight at bay because of a5. Maxim's response, it seems right now he has nothing concrete and comes up with a rather passive move. This is what he did. This one. But what does this do? I don't think anything, but can you afford to play passively at these types of tournaments? Levon can easily go on to remove this pawn on a5. But if you do, you might be disadvantaged. After knight takes and rook takes, there is c3, e takes, b takes, and when this guy on d3 comes off, there is, there is c takes b4, and after rook a2, therefore rook c3 going after the queen. But after this queen retreats to this spot here, the game looks very much equal. But right after age three, I think Levon is possibly trying to work out if he can remove a5. Levon is the person who loves to pull tricks, but is he possibly the one who's going to get tricked if he takes? What do you think he does or is he going to do? I think he's not going to take because if he didn't take before, he's not likely to take now. Right now, he can afford to develop his pieces. If he wants to play safe, there is h6 stopping all sorts of invites into g5. There is a knight move to d7, and there is always a queen repositioning, but don't ask where. Probably d6. What do you think Levon did? I'm waiting too. It has to be one of these moves we suggested because there is nothing else. Okay, finally, it took him over 17 minutes. 17 in time minutes. And it comes up with this queen move. I'm not sure what is going on. But there are too many pieces locked in. And we do have quite a complex situation. The bishop on e7 is poorly positioned. The knight on f6 is not better. But if you look at the white pieces, is he any better? You only need to be able to figure out 
what both white rooks are doing here. The knight on f3 is stuck. The other knight on b3 does not fare any better. And the state of this queen on d1 is in one word, miserable. Maxim goes for one move that would allow the queen some flexibility. He went for this, and the only move to have prevented this would have been h6, something we discussed before. Okay, I'm sorry guys, I, I'm gonna to have to cut this game short because I'm on emergency travel to overseas. I hope to be back later tonight. Okay, back to the game guys. The only problem with this game now is that I'm not covering it live anymore, so expect it to be uploaded by tomorrow. Levon has knight back to d7, and if Maxim does not trade, we're back to square one. Levon went exactly for this, and here Maxim chooses to trade the bishop. And seven minutes later, Maxim retreats the knight, looking to put him on c4. But has Maxim, Vigila Graf here, have a problem with this guy on a5? Because if Levon arrests him, he would also deny the knight his place on c4. Levon reserved this move for some time later. But what he does, he squeezes in the knight on c5. But Maxim does not bite here. He still went for c4, and rather than trade, Levon retreats the knight, and if you want to save this poor guy in a5, the rook needs to return to cover him. So, having little choice, Maxim went for this very move. Knight d6 led to this knight to retreat, and this game is going nowhere. Knight back led to repetition, and this will be very sad to see this game end in this fashion. Once these moves repeated, the game ended in a dead draw, and what a shame that is. I'd hoped for that bit more, but how wrong was I? Should they really ban games like this? Sometimes, if you don't reach a certain number of moves, you can even agree to draw, but the only rule that allows you to escape is to go for what exactly we saw here. Once you repeat moves, no one can argue. Well, the games have already finished, so I'm going to shut up and end it here. It is a shame, but these things happen. I shall be back with more. And I do have the perfect game for you, but I will cover as soon as this one goes out. So until next time, this was your chess puzzler.